I'll come for to get some horseshoe iron. Well, uh, that's the county seat. That's where I'm taking her. They got a gallows there. Hanging's a big holiday in comfort. She ought to draw a right big crowd on Saturday. You take her for me. As good citizens, living up to the law. You're taking her, ain't you? Ain't no gallows where I'm going. Yeah. Duke. Lily. Lily. Make a date with Sheriff Heber. Will you, Lily? For Saturday night? know each other? Not long ago, we were engaged to be married. Married. Bracelets, sir. Women love them, I hear. Babies cry for them even more than pink lemonade. Me, I, I don't go for bracelets. Uh, uh, wearing them for the past few weeks kind of cured me of the craving of them. I, I go in for necklaces myself. Oops, Green forgot I'm due to get one pretty soon. <laughs> uh, had a good sleep. Nothing like a good sleep to make a girl feel sleepy. Ah. Oh, take it easy, boys. Not for a few days yet, maybe longer. What's not? My funeral? You both look as if you're going to do it right this minute. Before I forget, no flowers. Use that money to, to get oiled. Roosted to the gills. That's how I want to be remembered. Through a rip snorting hangover. Right? I don't know you well enough to tell you to shut up like I do Charlie. That wasn't very funny. You know me as well as Charlie? Why, were you engaged to him too? No, we're both married to wagon train. Never had time for each other. How long has it been since you two kids were engaged? Well, let's see, I was about 10. Duke was two years older, right? Going on 13. It was a real hot romance. At school, he used to dip my pigtails into the inkwell, and I used to kick him in the shins during recess. Then, one day, his voice changed. Well, that threw me. Could I really go for a baritone, I asked myself. What would my family say? Well, you know what they said. No. Not a thing, because the only family I had was a father who was tone deaf and stone drunk most of the time. So I told Duke I was his. You remember what you answered? I told her to beat it or I'd put a mouse in her desk. <laughs> so I beat it and I moped for a while. Then I tried to make up for it by carrying his school books home. And he let me. He walked ahead of me, and he tried to make the back of his neck look as if it didn't know me. Gallant lad, that Duke. I've always said that. Then one day, an absolutely amazing thing happened. I, I, I picked up his books as usual. I got three feet behind him as usual. Embrace yourself, Worcester. He took back all his books, he grabbed my books, and he carried that whole library all by himself. <laughs> That's when I knew that love had come to Duke Shannon at last. That is the most romantical tale I've ever heard. It makes Romeo and whatever her name was seem amateurs by comparison. <laughs> well, don't keep me dangling. What is the end of this story? Then I moved. You wrote me some letters, I believe. Almost every day. You even sent me an engagement ring. It was beautiful. Fourteen carat solid brass. It had a red stone in it that turned white in time. I thought it was turning into a diamond. Would you believe that I was that innocent once? Well, uh, judging from your age now, I... Well, uh, I'd believe it, yes. Uh, 
him. Pa lost his job. We moved again. And he returned to his true profession of red eye taster. Then we moved again and again. You still wrote? The letters came back, Mark, that you had moved without leaving a forwarding address. So we did. Most of the time, we didn't even know where we were going. But I kept that ring for a long time, even after I realized that it wasn't going to turn into a diamond. I saw you about three years ago in St. Louis. I was working at the China Hat Saloon. I came in for a drink. I saw you at the bar. I was all set to sing a song, and then I lost my voice or something. Stayed backstage until you'd left. I know you were there. And that night, I finally threw away your ring. End of engagement. Hey, dust devil, that means the wind's coming up. Lily, you better get in the back and cover yourself up with that tarpaulin. Any minute now, the wind will be wheeling down here like a million devils. Come on, come on, come on. Look, I brought this bacon from the wagon. That's for breakfast. Now, if I can find something around here that lays eggs, we'll have a feast. Oh, I brought the candles, too, Duke. 
There's nothing as gloomy as gloom. Put them around like I've got this lamp. Well, that old wig will burn out in no time. Go ahead, put them around. Oh, yeah, I brought my coffee. Lily, just wait till you taste my coffee. <laughs> Tell her, Duke. I don't use that kind of language. Well, you will time you get a fire going in that Mexican's fit there. Go ahead and light it up and I'll fix it a feast. You wait and see. I have to take from that young whippersnapper. Oh, let him alone, Duke. That was a good meal. It's one of the best I ever had, truly. Thank you. A piece of the roof must have torn loose. I'll clean up. I'll help you. Miss Lee, you can sing half as well as you hum. You must have a voice like a hummingbird. Huh. I never took a lesson in my life, and I sound like it. Why don't you let us be the judge? That song you told us about, the one you were going to sing in St. Louis that night? Yeah. Let's hear it now. And if it upsets your stomachs, remember, you asked for it. <laughs> uh, to get into the proper mood, I'll need footlights. Will you help me, too? Sure. Footlights. <laughs> put them around here? Yeah, right. You two sit uh, there in the parterre boxes. You know, my parterre feels like it needs a little holster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need something that, uh, uh, like a baby, because this is a lullaby. Hey, I get an idea. You know them sacks? Give me that piece of cord, too. All right. Show you right quick. Is that skinny arms there? <laughs> Charlie's eldest son. You'll notice the resemblance, especially the naughty head. I'll hit you. It's a beautiful baby. Now, this is a, a cradle song. It's a funny thing to sing in a honky tonk, but the idea was it'd make him cry and it'd make him thirsty. <laughs> anyway, it was written by a young German composer named Brahms. I can't remember his first name. is something like John. I learned it from a girl who just come over from Germany. It's a very sad song. Lullaby and good night. Guardian angels to watch you. Close your eyes, dear. Never fear. Sleep all the night through. Go to sleep, go to sleep. Close your eyes now and rest. Go to sleep, go to sleep. May your dreams. Fitch. I'm a doctor of medicine. I have an office in Comfort just north of here. That young man is my assistant. He's reading medicine with me. And this is, or was rather, a patient of ours with a bad heart condition. We were taking him to my offices. I have a little wing I use as a hospital. Then we ran into this dreadful storm. 
strain was too much for his heart. Coronary occlusion, I would say, offhand. Well, thank you for giving us shelter. I assume you're going to let us stay for a while? Sure you can stay. That's why we dropped in and get out of the weather, you know. Thank you. A haven. A place of rest. Oh, now, as a, to my patient, he doesn't require shelter, strictly speaking. But in the name of simple humanity, we cannot leave him out in the tempest. Is there a place where... Oh, sure. Uh, right on the back here, we have a little lean to. Come on, take it this way, please. Right here. Heart attack? Oh, sure. A heart, when it's attacked by a bullet, could have a... What do you call it? A coronary occlusion. for an old friend. We'll find a more permanent resting place for him post-tempest. <laughs> dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Very appropriate at the moment. Uh, we'll require a place to lay our heads. Now, we make no demands. A corner of this very room, if there are no other accommodations. Bedroom right there you can have. The shutters may bang around a little bit, but you can lash them down. Come on. Sounds positively deluxe in our present state of weariness. Come, Piper. Good night. Good night. Billy, there's a bedroom there for you. Got most of the bed in it. Myself, I'm going to flop in there someplace. What am I going to do with you do? I'm going to stay right here. Yeah. You know, maybe that's not a bad idea. Those two strangers, kind of funny fellas, that, especially that doctor. He never took his hand off that satchel, even when he was laying the body down. Yeah, I saw the blood, and I'm no doctor either. But that looks like a 45 caliber heart attack to me, and they're usually fatal. You think one of them killed him? Why else would they bring the body back with them? There's no point in trying to figure it out tonight. I'm turning in, and I think you should do the same thing, Lily. Good night. Good night. It sounds just like a gunshot. I wish they'd tie it down. Well, any night. Lily, who did you kill? A friend, a girl. Can't kill a stranger, can she? Be rude. Hi. Try back that shutter, Piper. We'll neither get any sleep. idea of bringing Hondo back with us, wasn't it, Doc? Huh? <laughs> that was one lousy idea. He was our leader. He had planned everything. In a manner of speaking, he gave his life for us, shooting it out for that posse. Yeah. What do we have to go back and get him for, Doc? What good is a dead man? You're quite hopelessly villainous, aren't you? A gross and greedy young man without the least vestige of decent human feeling. <laughs> Yeah, I'm a real bad fella, Doc. Now, just tell me why we brought him here. So that he could have a decent burial. So he wouldn't be left to rot in some nameless boot hill. He will have proper and reverent words said over his remains. It will be a comfort to his widow. <laughs> Doc, that is real touching. Yes, it is. If I had a clean handkerchief, I think I'd do a little crying, Doc. You got a clean hanky in there? You leave that alone. Half of it is mine, remember? One third. Doc, where Honda wears the money burned before he could even count it. Elena, his widow, she gets his share. Doc, if there's anything that turns my stomach, it's a thief turning honest. A pinch of soda should settle your gastric upset. Perhaps those people in there have some. Now, those two men in there, Doc, and that painted cat, now who are they? I don't know, and I care less. 
But we'll avoid any trouble with him, and that means you'll stay away from that girl. Yeah, but Doc, suppose she don't stay away from me. I mean, what do I do? Do I cry? Do I scream for help? <laughs> Go to sleep. We're in enough trouble as it is, Doc, if you want to call it trouble. Because Hondo did a little bleeding. I think jousting around on your saddle must have started it off, because I caught that old man with a beard looking at the blood on the floor. But it's no real trouble, come to think of it. No, just two slugs. We got no witnesses. No one to identify us, just in case. Now, the girl. Like you said, though, Doc, I'm a, a gross, greedy young man. But I got six notches on my gun, and not one of them belonged to a female as yet. Now, what is your advice, Dr. Fitch? We'll deal with that problem in the morning. clear to Utah. Why don't I make it Arizona? It's there. Sunshine, no rain or fog, clear air. Heals conditions like yours. What is my condition? Consumption. I've seen it on the train. Eyes too bright, cheeks a little too red. Night fever and that cough. Getting to be a skeptical age. No one believes in croup anymore. No, thank you. My father had it, too. Runs in the family, I guess. He almost uh, succeeded in killing it with booze. Then one day, right in the middle of a shot of whiskey, it killed him. Quick, sudden, like a light turned off. Good way to go if you can't hang around. I was there at his funeral. Where were you? I was there the day before when he threatened that redheaded fellow. How'd you happen to be in Galesburg? Went there looking for you. Couldn't find anything out from the neighbors, but there was a bartender there that was a pal of your father's. They all were. They liked him truly. He said your father wrote him from Cedar Springs. You weren't at that address, so I asked a few more bartenders. One of them finally had it. It was a place called Galesburg, near the rail line. When I got there, there was a fight going on. Your father and that red-headed fellow. It was over you. If he didn't leave you alone, your father said he was going to kill him. There was a big crowd standing around watching, listening, laughing. Talk got pretty rotten. Well, the fellow finally went away. And so did I. And so did I, that night, with him. I should have interfered. I should have taken you away right then. But I thought that the next day, when it was all over, I'd come back and get you and we'd be married. If I had, your life would have been very different. Don't be so sure. I am what I am. Crying about me, too. Louis, I want you to marry me. But that same judge who sentenced me to hang, oh, that'd be interesting. I'm going to get you cured. I'm leaving the wagon train. As soon as this gale's over, we'll go down south and homestead a piece of land. I'll get some kind of work and we'll. Dude, you're ordering me to do things. We'll get married, not 
Well, marry me. The homestead will go south. Why don't you ask me? Why don't you ask me one thing? What? Do I want to go away with you? Do I still care about you? Do you? You're the only man I've ever loved. No, Duke, I will not go with you. Pretty intelligent girl recognizing that move to Arizona to be local. You can give my resignation to Chris. Bill can do the scout until you find someone else. Homesteading in a tent, I suppose. Oh, I'll get work when I get there, you said. In the Arizona Territory, doing what? Making airheads for the Apaches? They pay off in wampum, you know. Lily can wear it around her neck. We'll make out. I'm gonna see that she gets well. I owe her that much. All right, what are you gonna eat on the desert? Of course, I've been told them Pima Indians eat dogs. Of course, I can't argue with you because I've never eaten any dogs. Will you listen to me? No. You listen to me. In the first place, she ain't going with you. She said she loves me. She'll go. All right, then how about your duty to the train? My duty's to her. Oh, hogwash. Wasting your young self on a... On a what? On a murderous, consumptive hussy. Charlie. 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 I, I don't know what got into me. I didn't mean it, Charlie. Honest, Charlie, I didn't mean it. Shutter must have broke loose again. Suppose I'll get up and tie it up when it wakes him up. Charlie, what can I say? Well, you might say you don't want any coffee because I never got a chance to make it. Well, women, complications. What's an old buzzard like me know what goes on in a young man's heart? I really should apologize to you for butting in the way I tried to. Why you wanted in? To talk about the weather? In a way. Thought maybe you'd like to help me spend this. How'd you get all that money? From a bank. Real good terms, didn't have to pay no interest at all. Mm. And the law wasn't interested either? Oh, sure, honey. Why, all my life I've had marshals and, and deputies feed me and trying to protect me. They're so interested in me, they got a notice in every post office just begging to find out where I am. Honey, why don't you and me quit sparring? Just heard the bell. Round's over. What do you want? <clears throat> There's about a thousand dollars here. <laughs> you know I got fifty thousand more right here in this bag. Hmm? Nice, fresh, green dinero. You get the smell of that? Huh? Honey, that smells of, of South America. White beaches, soft music. And Europe. Paris, Monte Carlo, you name it. Feel it, touch it, heft it. Come on, get the feel of it. Feels comfortable. Why me as a traveling companion? 
<laughs> I took a look at you a couple hours ago, honey. That's all I needed. That shutter that banged in your room. Yeah, you know, poor Fitch, huh? It scared him right into a heart attack. You know, that's the second one I've seen today. They might be catching. What do you say? Oh, the big one in the other room, huh? He's a friend of yours. We've met. And you like him. Much more than is good for him. Hmm? Which is why I'm going with you. You and I are trash. We're both cut from the same bolt of shoddy material, so how can I turn you down? Since when does rubbish refuse an offer from garbage? <laughs> but I'm not good enough for that guy in there. By the way, I uh, killed a man who slapped me a little while ago. <laughs> I'll go away with you and we'll have ourselves a time. If you ever get rough again with me, I'll... <coughs> Had a cough I can't seem to shake. Croup, maybe. You sure that's all it is? Oh, you big tough guys got one thing in common. You scare easy. Rob a bank, kill your partner, sure, nothing to it. But let a girl cough delicately your way. You come unglued. Listen, I saw my brother die of it. He choked to death trying to take a breath. He strangled just like he had a rope around his neck. A great idea. Beat it. Well, you don't have to be so touchy about it, honey. I was just asking that, so. After all, a black duster like out there is not too good for your crew. You're so right. Well, now that you've pulled yourself together, you still want me to go with you? More than ever now. Then let's go. Still bleeding? Well, if it is, it's because I'm so doggone healthy. You know, I got enough blood for two people. In fact, I should have been twins. I'll go back then. If that old doctor's a doctor, I'll let him doctor me up a little bit. I'll be right back. Oh, she's 
dying. And I was in the same room with her. What? I can, I could catch it. Yeah, you can catch it if you're in the same room with them. And I was in the same room with her. What? Till morning, and then she may be. Duke! Lily. What do we do, Duke? Pray, Charlie. Everybody's prayers get answered, one way or another. I lied to you. <laughs> 